listen to my pattern. Can you do that? One, two, already, and I go. I'll do it one more time. Good. This might help clear it up. Click, clack, move. Click, clack, move. Clickety, clack, move. Say that. Click, clack, move. Click, clack, move. Clickety, 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 clack, move. All right. Click, clack, move. Click, clack, move. Clickety, clack, move. Click, 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 clack, move. Whisper. Two. Ready? Here I go. Good. Now do. I'll say it one more time. Say you do. Two, ready, and I go. Click, clack, boo. Click, clack, boo. Click, clack, boo. Click, clack, boo. Oh, no, we're good. So if you would, place your rhythm six in front of you. This morning, we're going to go over, read, click, clack, boo, cows that tight. <laughs> this book's great. Um, by Doreen Cronin. And the pictures are Betsy Lewin. Now, there are a couple of characters in this book. So, every time that I say a character's name, I want you to make their sound. So, the first one is, any time I say, Farmer Brown, you're going to go, Yee-haw! So, Farmer Brown, Yee-haw! Good. So, I, and y'all got the energy this morning. Good. Any time I say cows, I want you to go, Mo. So, the cows. Mau! Good. Now, the hens. <coughs> the hens. <coughs> and then finally, the duck. Quack. The duck. Quack. So, what about who was Farmer Brown? Now, while I'm reading the book, any time that you hear the phrase, all day long he hears, I want you to take your rhythm sticks and go, click, clack, boo, click, clack, boo, click, clack, boo, click, clack, boo. So, take your rhythm sticks. Good, and thank you for holding them properly. So, all day long he hears, click, clack, boo. Good. Now, real quick, we're going to go out of teacher mode first, or sorry, out of teaching, you know, mode for a second and go into a pedagogy thing. What if you have a student who can't do this? Alternate. Because that is a key we want. Because when they're playing mallet instruments, we want the dog. Alright, back to the book. Click, click, move, cows the type. Farmer Brown yeah! has a problem. His cows <laughs> like to type. All day long he hears. Click clack boo, click clack boo, click a dee clack boo. At first he couldn't believe his ears. Cows? <coughs> that type? Impossible. All day long he hears. Click clack boo, click clack boo, click a dee clack boo. 
Then he couldn't believe his eyes. Dear Farmer Brown, yeah! The barn is very cold at night. We'd like some electric blankets. Sincerely, the cow. Mm. Stop with that. And the more I think about it, I'm like, you know what? I can do so much more with this book besides um, just reading it to you. So, Alex, would you go to the dry erase board? And if you need a, a marker, it's by the recorder up there. Will you um, notate um, by lines and dots, click, clack, move, click, clack, move, clickety, clack, move? Lines and dots? Mm -hmm. How would you represent that rhythm by just drawing lines and dots? Oh, okay. You don't have to do it on a um, staff. I want <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no notation. Lines and dots. Yeah, just lines and dots. <laughs> think, think like first, second grade. Oh. Oh. What? No. Allie, Allie, I'm sorry, maybe it's me. Just like dots. Da, da, da. Oh, I get what Good, and that? It should probably be more like that then. Good, no, that's perfect. All right, now, thank you, Alex. We've notated it, or shown a representation of it. Um, how many syllables are in click? One. Clack. One. Moo. One. Click. One. Clack. One. Moo. One. Click it, T. Three. Ready, and I go. Good, actually. Oh, that'd be good. And that'd be good for what grade? Probably like four. Yeah, fourth. fourth. You start learning 16th notes in fourth grade. Fourth or fifth grade. Could you do anything else with that? With the book, I mean? Uh, you could change it up completely and turn it into triplets. Okay. Let's leave um, let's leave rhythm out of it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Instead of like the sounds of the animals using your voice, you could have instruments. Represent the sound of the animals? Yes. Yes. Create, create, create motifs. <laughs> you can also, could you have them compose a melody on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's do that. Let's, um, I want everyone to grab a bard instrument. Wait with second graders. I want to be, now, just FYI, I would have these instruments already out by the time that class started. Um, since we can't do that in this class. Thank you for getting them out. If you would, I want you to put it in C pentatonic. So take remember, remember the rules. Are you supposed to remove the bars with one hand or two? Two, two please. Thank you. Because those pegs will come out. They already have on this Oh, so let's review C pentatonic. Uh, you have C, D, E. What do you do with F? You remove it. You remove it. You remove Good. it then you have, what's next? G and A. G and A. And then you remove the B. I always say fries and burgers, whatever you want to eat. I'm missing the G. I'm not too concerned about that. No, just, you'll use the bottom. So take 20 seconds, explore your instrument. <laughs> Thank you. 
how far will it be? Um, with your mallet, softly click the melody. Uh, sorry, not the melody, the rhythm. One, two, ready, and go. Good. Can you play it softly on C? Just C. One, two, very nice. Can you do it two times? Two times three. One, two. Good, and just go straight into it. Clickety clap move. Click clap move. Click clap move. This time, I want you to add D. Start on C, but add D wherever you want. Doesn't matter. One, two. Can you repeat this time? Do it two times. One, two, ready, and I go. and then we fix them. All right, add G this time. Just start on C, that's all I ask. One, two, and G, go now.
<laughs> Thank you, Mr. This might help. Yes. I don't know. Yes. See the mic up. Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner Wallendiner. Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner Wallendiner. Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. Hogan, Logan, Bogan was her name. Uh, what's her first name? Catalina. Oh, okay, good. Unless it's one of those hillbilly hyphens, Magdalena names. Now we don't stereotype. Hogan, Logan, Bogan. I'm, I'm hillbilly. <laughs> so I'll say it all together. Maybe we can get it this time. Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner Wallendiner Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner Wallendiner Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. Show me a four, three, two, or one. Four, you have it. Three, you need more time. Two, you need a little bit more time than that. And one, you need. Oh, oh, good. Thank you. All right, one more time. Say it. One, two, ready, go. Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner Wallendiner Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. Say it with me. Say your name. One, two, ready, go. Catalina Magdalena Hoopensteiner Wallendiner Hogan Logan Bogan was her name. 
Go ahead, can you play that rhythm softly with your sticks? Just play. One, two, ready, go. And Play it all on G. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> She had a funny name, but she wasn't much to blame. Her mother gave it to her just the same, same, same. What was her name? Well, she had two peculiar hairs on her head. One was black and one was red. What was her name? She had two eyes that were quite a sight. One looked left and the other looked right. What was her name? She had two holes in the bottom of her nose. One for her fingers and one for her toes. What was her name? She had two teeth inside of 
her mouth. One went north and the other one went south. What was her name? She had two arms that flopped all around. When she walked, they would drag the ground. What was her name? She had two feet that were wide and flat, each one bigger than a bathroom mat. What was her name? She had one brain inside of her head. What it thought is what she said. What was her name? And you are to teach it to us with a partner. So you first need to figure out the melody. They're very easy melodies. The second thing that I want you to do is I want you to add a rhythmic ostinato and a melodic ostinato. Got it? When you add a rhythmic ostinato, I would love for you to add a non-pitch percussion. So, got it? Three, four, three. Okay. Um, so I'll do a group of three. So Monica and Jimmy, we can, um, just, when you're done, just go back to your seat and I'll know that you're ready. going to do is you're going to come up, teach it to us, and basically we are your guinea pigs to see if you like what you're doing with this song, folk song. Um, I may make little suggestions or ask you questions afterwards, but if you, and if you get stuck, that's okay. Ask us where to go next, all right? Anyone like to volunteer first? All right. I, I, I want to ask a question. Oh. Um, do you want us to go through each of our steps, even mm -hmm. if it's long? Okay. First, then. If you want to go first, then sure. Let's gather. I, I love the confidence. Let's gather around the campfire and sing our campfire song. Our C A M P F I R E S O N G song. And if you don't think it, we can sing it faster than you're wrong. The last full line, those two ideas, one, two, three, go. Again, 
Here we go to Baltimore. To be hind and to be fore. To be hind and to be fore. How much further must we go until we get to Baltimore? How much further must we go until we get to Baltimore? So I want. I mean, what? Um, or are, do you want me to just explain it? Well, um, are you going to stop there with them learning the melody? Um, Not necessarily. So we have it that we were going to get the bard instruments out, and we were going to do the harmonic ostinato first with um, singing, melody. and then split the group up. Half does the harmonic and then half does a melodic um, on the Baltimore, Baltimore, while we're all still singing the melody. And then after that, it goes into an improv where we the so groups are split in half. One group does the Bordeaux and then the other one improvs a melody and then it switches. Yeah. Since it's an eight measure thing. And this is something that I almost do kind of on the fly. Not that you didn't, it's not that it's, it's not wrong that you didn't do it. But did you notice anything? Let, let's sing the melody again and tell me if you notice anything. Do we all remember the melody? One, so, two, ready, go. Here we go to Baltimore, to be high and to be far. How much further must we go until we get to Baltimore? Did you notice anything? And I would say you would notice this more with kids than you would with us. Are we bored with it? No, 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 no. Well, yes, probably, but... Um, Not remembering the lyrics? Uh, no, I think I think the lyrics are okay. I think y'all are have and some people may have a little trouble with the pitch, as far as where the note lies. So what could you do if you're having trouble with pitches? Play with piano. Okay. Just have them sing it on do. What else could you do? Have them um, play it on a bar instrument first. You'll play the melody on the bar instrument and then add in the word instead. And so Jared brought up solfege, but what's even something simpler, something simpler that students could do with um, their body? Show and Yeah. <laughs> helping that she did that at first. Yeah, you started to do it. You started to do it, and I was helping you continue on. Let's do. Let's all do it with the hands and see if that helps. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go to Baltimore to be high and to be far. How much further must we go until we get to Baltimore? Yeah. It, it shows you where you go down at. So I was a little confused. Too. I think, and, and I think and with a lot of things, whenever you feel like they're not getting the music, you, so, you, sometimes you don't have to use the Kodai. Sometimes you just do this, or you use this, depending on how the melody goes. Yeah. And I just have a question. Would I be correct in saying that you wouldn't necessarily have to tell the kids why you're doing it? You could just tell the kids, hey, do what I do with your hands, and they won't even know that you're doing... Yeah, I mean, you shove it with your hands. 
Because really in like lessons, especially with kids, like the less talking, the better, right? Because the more that you can just keep them engaged and involved. Because I feel like if you tell them why you're doing that, right. it'll just be more confusing. If you just tell them, sing the melody and follow your hands with my hands. Yeah, it's almost a little bit too much. And like, what, I mean, just do what I do. Yeah, just do, do what, what I do, do or, or show me motions with your hands, and that's all you have to do. And you don't even good. have to say, oh, oh gosh, they're not, y'all are not getting the pitches, you know, uh, let's go back and learn this. And No, how about we just add our hands this time? I, I, and you were starting to do it, and I was like, okay, oh, fuck. <laughs> but no, you got it, you got it. Um, so I, I want to stop right there, but then on Wednesday I want you to add what you were going to do. So do um, the rest. Huh? We'll do the rest. Yeah, I want you. I want us to all to do the complete this on Wednesday. Um, the great thing is, like I, I understand like some of these melodies are a little old, um, but also it depends on what you're teaching. Um, so no. Is that a do mi so so? No, don't. It's re mi so so, re mi so, re mi so so, re re re, re mi so so, re mi so so, re mi so so, re mi mi. I got Okay, so maybe a third grade or second grade. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, so it depends on if you're eventually going to go to Solfege, maybe not. I don't know. A lot of times when people do teach um, folk songs, they do go towards the Kadai by the end of it. You can rethink that, maybe not. Maybe you're trying to just teach.